12 days out. You believe in me? Yeah. Comment below if you believe in me. I've been up since 4 o'clock. You guys care? Why? It's Cassius. I don't know. I think it was a goddamn raccoon. So Cassius was barking his tits off for an hour. I'm tired, man. Why didn't you just roll over? Can't. Once I'm up, I'm up. I can't nap. Once I'm up, I'm up. It's a gift, it's a curse. You're gonna sleep through an earthquake and the building's gonna fall on you, I'm gonna be out the door. But you can nap. A little bit of belt squat. Pull something. 585, try to smoke it. Some drop sets of five. Maybe 475 to 500. Just keeping fatigue up a little bit and then uh, yeah, we'll see what the hell happens in 10 days. Staff, what does consistent nutrition mean? Bulking and not stopping? Question mark. Consistent just means like training. Doesn't mean you have to go be perfect, but uh, typically a consistent amount of protein daily and a consistent amount of carbs and fat daily. Whether you're bulking or not, all depends on your goals. Uh, obviously, to get strong, a slight surplus, meaning just above maintenance calories, is going to be best. But it's just the fact that we're hitting those numbers day to day. Not way up one day, way down one day, protein at 100, then protein at 200. Just like lifting, if you go in and do 10 sets of 10 on Monday, but don't chain, train bench for another 10 days, your progress is gonna be very, very slow. You can make progress, but it's gonna be very, very slow. Rather than just doing three sets every other day for a long time. A little bit of hard work over a long period of time, consistency, uh, kind of gets you everywhere you wanna go. Nutrition, business, work. It's not like I'm on the phone call with CEOs all day doing all these business deals. Mm -hmm. But I answer my emails on time. I do a little bit of work every single day for the last 10 years and it's gotten me wherever I am. I don't know if that's good. <laughs> I don't know if that's the, uh, the uh, catcher there, but uh, I'm doing pretty good. So little things, small things, done right, build habits, long period. Would you generally suggest to do higher carb days the day before? or the day of yeah. heavy workouts. Yeah, so we talked in the last video, you guys will check that out, kind of about how I do my nutrition, besides just the basics of flexible diet and tracking my macros. Um, and that kind of depends on you, whether you want to have your higher carb days or lesser carb days on the day before lifting or not. For me, I like eating uh, my carbs in the morning when I'm training in the afternoon, like today. So I had a big burrito this morning, Chipotle, sponsor your boy. Um, and we're training, it's 2.30 now, I had a burrito at like 10 or 11. Um, but on Fridays, uh, I also have a high carb day because we train early Saturday morning and I can't get a meal in. So a lot of it's gonna be uh, trial and error, what works for your head and also what works for your body and your kind of your digestion. Um, the overall effect, because the carbs will be the same weekly, as long as you're consistent, uh, will probably be fine in terms of body composition and energy overall. Um, but give it a month or so, trying it one way, see how you feel, and then switch it up uh, if necessary but typically I think for most people having your carbs around your workout higher carb day on your workout day probably is going to be best got another diet question <clears throat> I don't want to put this guy on blast but <clears throat> Just ask your question. Don't say, I have a question, before you ask the question. He says, I have a question. I've been stressed as fuck lately. Have a hard time forcing myself to eat, and I haven't been eating healthy. Got any tips? I don't want to lose gains and get fat. Um, stress can cause, uh, you know, I think there's kind of two kinds of peoples. When you're stressed, you either binge and overeat, or when you're stressed, you don't eat at all. Um, I tend to be the one that overeats when I'm stressed. But um, for anybody, I think tracking your food kind of makes you accountable and makes you adhere to your diet so I always talk about putting a food in your phone weighing it before you put it in your mouth um, that can kind of help and if you track your food the day before and then you can it's kind of like a checklist of things you have to do that day I do a mental checklist every night before I go to bed okay I'm waking up at 8 
I'm going to do emails from 8 to 9. I have a Skype meeting at 10, a podcast at 12, and then I'm hopping on Twitch at 3. I'm going to eat at uh, 1 because that's the only gap I have. I'm going to work out at 5 or whatever it is. I always have that checklist. So if you have a checklist of what you have to do that day, you could literally just put in the checklist of what you have to eat that day in my fitness power or whatever app you use, and then you just go through it. Oh, okay, I still have a banana to eat, a turkey sandwich to eat, and a piece of pizza to eat. Obviously, um, eating unhealthy, I uh, don't know what you mean by that, probably less micronutrient-dense foods, trying to get in some fruits and vegetables will help. Having those things around the house and available helps. I know if I have a bowl of peaches in front of me in the kitchen, every time I go refill my water, I see a peach, sometimes I'm more likely to eat a peach um, rather than grab whatever it is, Cheetos or whatever you're eating that's unhealthy. Uh, busy schedules, obviously stress schedules, can be more difficult to adhere to diets. Um, it's hard, man. It's hard. You know, my schedule changes every every other day, uh, every week. I'm I'm either moving or a different project or a different city, and so it is sometimes very hard. But uh, just do the best you can, and, and try not to extra stress just on your eating. Do the best you can. Be as consistent as you can. Try to find a routine. Try to find a little bit of discipline. You should be all right. This guy says, "Have you ever thought about going back to conventional, since your body isn't made for the sumo deadlift?" Come down here, Sonny. Oh, do you hear those knees? <laughs> yeah. um, so my body technically really isn't made to pull. Uh, if you want to go like perfect levers, I got pretty long torso, really short arms. If you can see here, oh, this is my wee wee. It's more like this, but it's right here. And this is where my lockout would be, right at the peen or. So short arms, long torso, uh, small-ish thighs, which are good for squatting, but uh, not good for sumo, and my mobility sucks. I can't really force my shit out, so uh, I'm not really built to pull conventional or sumo, um, but for some reason, it's my best lift, so it's just what I work with. Sumo allows me to train more volume. Um, it feels most comfortable, and I've lifted the most amount of weight there. In my off-season, or when I'm not um, pushing the weight a little bit, I always do conventional. I think after this powerlifting meet that I have in about uh, two weeks here, I'll probably move into some trap bar stuff and start working on um, some more single leg movements, some Bulgarians, maybe some lunges, maybe some one uh, leg leg press because uh, our boy Alan Trawl has a leg press in here that I, I don't utilize enough. So I'm going to start um, speeding up my workouts a little bit, getting a little bit more circuit training, uh, start to breathe a little bit heavier, try to uh, get a little bit leaner in which I'll probably do a little bit of conventional, but um, I might just do a trap bar or something like that. So I don't think my body's made for the conventional. I don't think my body's made for the sumo. Typically, if you're made to pull, um, really, really long arms, short torso, you'll be pretty set up for a conventional or sumo. That's just kind of how it goes. Um, and you can't always base it on what your body uh, looks like it's built for. Again, I have, I have short little biceps. It should be a really big bencher. I'm a pretty mediocre bencher. I mean, let's be honest. I'm pretty mediocre at it all except for entertaining. So... Um, just don't go by that, you know, find out what feels best. I do train conventional, I've trained conventional for a long time. I think I've pulled 660 for two or so conventional and then 650 for three or four sumo. So uh, it's kind of neck and neck, but uh, I can handle more volume, more frequency sumo. So that's what I do most of the time. Appreciate you guys for kicking it. More vlogs, five days a week now. Vlogs, gym training, a little bit of uh, fitness talk. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Turn on notifications, be sure to subscribe, give this thing a thumbs up. I'll see you guys in the next one. Sound like we're out of here.